I'm Eddie Muller, welcoming you to the secret Tiki Lounge Annex of Noir Alley. I am excited about today's movie, not only because it's dynamite, but it's the perfect Father's Day film. It's Underworld USA, written, produced, and directed by Samuel Fuller for Columbia Pictures in 1961. Don't expect saccharine paternal sentiment. This is a hardcore crime thriller about a young punk who dedicates his life to avenging the murder of his old man. By 1961, Hollywood had all but exhausted the trend in crime exposés that filled movie theaters in the 50s. Earlier this year, we showed one of the first, 1952's The Captive City, with John Forsythe as a reporter risking his life to expose organized crime seepage into small-town America. Similar films followed, The Phoenix City Story, New York Confidential, Hoodlum Empire, literally dozens more, all warning that if we weren't vigilant, legitimate businesses would be corrupted beyond repair, and gang bosses would soon be controlling our cities and states. Businessmen, politicians, and racketeers would become indistinguishable. Can you imagine? These movies depicted the law's battle against organized crime as a war for the soul of America. Wait, did somebody say war? Well, if it's a war, then it's right up Sam Fuller's alley. The veteran World War II infantryman saw life as a never-ending battle between warring factions with his people, the ones he wrote about in sensational supercharged scripts, struggling to survive the crossfire. And that's what makes Underworld USA distinctive from all the other films in this sociological subgenre. It may have been inspired by Joseph Deneen's investigative articles, also titled Underworld USA. But beyond the title and some facts and figures pulled from Deneen's article, this screenplay is pure Sam Fuller. Under the guise of ripping the lid off the vice rackets, which he does in a talky, but punchy tabloid style, the focus is squarely on one man and his crusade to kill the crooks who murdered his father. Both the man and the film are cold, calculating, and ruthless. Fuller's protagonist, Tolly Devlin, is played by Cliff Robertson, who relished playing against type. He first gained notoriety in 1955's Picnic, opposite William Holden and Kim Novak. After appearing in a few challenging roles at Columbia, including Joan Crawford's mentally disturbed lover in Autumn Leaves, Robertson looked like he might go the matinee idol route, playing the big kahuna opposite Sandra D in Columbia's 1959 hit, Gidget. But when Sam Fuller tapped him to portray the violent and vindictive antihero of this story, Robertson threw himself into the part, some might say a bit too avidly. To me, Robertson's twitchy, sneering performance completely fits Fuller's go-for-broke style. And thanks to cameraman Hal Moore's extraordinary close-ups, the actor's blandly handsome face has never been more compelling. To best explain how Sam Fuller attacked the subject, here's how he wanted to open the picture. Imagine a pre-credit sequence filled with women's scantily clad bodies writhing on the floor in close-ups. The camera then pulls back to reveal them all positioned in the shape of the United States. One of the women stands up and talks straight to the camera. She explains they're all prostitutes fed up with being exploited. They're going to form a union to fight for their fair share of the money earned off their labor by racket bosses across the nation. A shadowy figure then emerges from off screen, sticks a gun in her mouth and pulls the trigger. Nobody ever accused Sam Fuller of subtlety. But then, who needs subtlety when you make movies as viscerally exciting as Sam Fuller? With the only glimmers of sanity and compassion coming from the women played by Beatrice Kay and Dolores Dorn, here's your Father's Day present. 99 minutes of relentless, smash-mouth cinema. This is Underworld USA. <laughs>